This story delves into the enigmatic Homo rudolfensis, exploring whether it represents a separate lineage or a variant of Homo habilis. Through a detailed examination of its discovery, morphology, and evolutionary implications, the narrative sheds light on this pivotal species and its role in the complex story of human evolution. Part 1, Introduction to Homo rudolfensis. The study of human evolution is a constantly evolving field, with new discoveries frequently challenging established ideas and theories. One such discovery that has sparked significant debate within the paleoanthropological community is that of Homo rudolfensis. First discovered by Richard Leakey in 1972 at Lake Turkana in Kenya, this species has since been the subject of extensive study and controversy. The fossil, initially designated KNMER 1470, became one of the most important finds in the field due to its unique features, which raised questions about its place in the human lineage. Homo rudolfensis is characterized by a combination of traits that set it apart from other early hominins, particularly Homo habilis, with which it is often compared. These traits include a larger cranial capacity, a flatter face, and distinct dental morphology. The initial interpretation of these features led to debates about whether Homo rudolfensis should be classified as a separate species or merely a variant of Homo habilis. This question has profound implications for our understanding of human evolution, particularly in terms of the diversity and adaptability of early Homo species. The discovery of Homo rudolfensis came at a time when the field of paleoanthropology was undergoing significant changes. The 1970s saw a surge in fossil discoveries, many of which challenged the linear model of human evolution that had dominated the field for much of the 20th century. Instead of a single, straight line leading from early hominins to modern humans, the fossil record began to reveal a more complex picture of multiple hominin species coexisting and potentially interacting with one another. Homo rudolfensis is particularly significant because it represents one of these early Homo species that complicates the narrative of human evolution. Its unique features suggest that it might have been part of a separate lineage from Homo habilis, leading to the development of different adaptations and survival strategies. This raises important questions about how these species coexisted and whether they might have competed for resources or even interbred. In the broader context of human evolution, Homo rudolfensis provides valuable insights into the diversity of the genus Homo during the Pleistocene epoch. The Pleistocene, which lasted from about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago, was a time of significant environmental changes, including the onset of ice ages and the expansion of grasslands. These changes would have had a profound impact on early hominins, forcing them to adapt to new environments and develop new survival strategies. Homo rudolfensis, with its larger brain and distinct facial features, might represent one of these adaptations. The study of Homo rudolfensis also highlights the importance of fossil evidence in reconstructing the evolutionary history of our species. The fossil record is often incomplete, and each new discovery can challenge existing ideas and lead to new interpretations. The debate over Homo rudolfensis is a prime example of this, as different interpretations of the same fossil evidence have led to different conclusions about its place in the human lineage. Despite the ongoing debates, Homo rudolfensis remains a key species in the study of human evolution. Its discovery has provided valuable insights into the diversity and adaptability of early Homo species, and it continues to be the subject of extensive research. As new technologies and methods are developed, such as advances in genetic analysis and more sophisticated techniques for analyzing fossil evidence, our understanding of Homo rudolfensis and its place in the human lineage is likely to continue to evolve. The story of Homo rudolfensis is a testament to the complexity of human evolution and the importance of ongoing research in the field. As we continue to discover new fossils and develop new methods for analyzing them, we gain a deeper understanding of the factors that shaped our species and the diverse paths that early hominins might have taken. Whether Homo rudolfensis represents a separate lineage or a variant of Homo habilis, its study has enriched our understanding of human evolution and will continue to do so in the future. Part 2, The Debate Begins, Homo rudolfensis vs. Homo habilis. The debate over the classification of Homo rudolfensis began almost immediately after its discovery. 
Richard Leakey, who found the fossil in 1972, initially assigned it to the species Homo habilis, which had been discovered a decade earlier by his father, Louis Leakey, along with Mary Leakey. Homo habilis, known as Handy Man, was one of the earliest members of the genus Homo and was believed to be a direct ancestor of modern humans. The discovery of Homo habilis had already challenged the existing models of human evolution, and the introduction of Homo rudolfensis into the mix only added to the complexity. The fossil KNMER 1470, which would later be identified as Homo rudolfensis, presented a unique combination of features that set it apart from other Homo habilis specimens. It had a larger cranial capacity, estimated at around 750 cubic centimeters, which was significantly larger than that of most Homo habilis fossils. This larger brain size suggested that Homo rudolfensis might have had greater cognitive abilities, which would have implications for its behavior and tool use. In addition to its larger brain, Homo rudolfensis also had a flatter face with less pronounced brow ridges. This was in contrast to the more prognathic, protruding, faces and prominent brow ridges seen in Homo habilis. The dental morphology of Homo rudolfensis was also distinct, with larger molars and a more robust jaw, indicating differences in diet and possibly lifestyle. These differences led to debates within the paleoanthropological community about whether Homo rudolfensis should be classified as a separate species or as a variant of Homo habilis. Some researchers argued that the differences were significant enough to warrant a separate species designation, while others believed that the variations fell within the normal range of variation for a single species. One of the key figures in this debate was Bernard Wood, a prominent paleoanthropologist who has conducted extensive research on early Homo species. Wood argued that the differences between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis were too great to be explained by intraspecific variation, variation within a species. He proposed that Homo rudolfensis should be recognized as a separate species, with its own distinct evolutionary lineage. Wood's argument was based on a detailed analysis of the fossil evidence, including cranial morphology, dental characteristics, and postcranial anatomy. He pointed out that the combination of features seen in Homo rudolfensis was unique and did not overlap significantly with those of Homo habilis. This suggested that Homo rudolfensis might represent a separate evolutionary experiment within the genus Homo, potentially leading to different adaptations and survival strategies. On the other hand, some researchers argued that the differences between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis could be explained by factors such as sexual dimorphism, differences between males and females, or geographic variation. They suggested that the larger brain size and different facial features of Homo rudolfensis might represent a regional variant of Homo habilis, rather than a separate species. This debate has continued for decades, with new fossil discoveries and advances in technology providing additional evidence to support both sides. Some researchers have proposed that Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis might have coexisted in the same regions, leading to potential competition for resources and ecological niches. Others have suggested that the two species might have occupied different ecological niches, with Homo rudolfensis possibly specializing in different types of food or environments. The debate over the classification of Homo rudolfensis highlights the challenges of studying early human evolution. The fossil record is often incomplete, and researchers must rely on a combination of morphological, anatomical, and sometimes genetic evidence to make inferences about relationships between species. This can lead to differing interpretations of the same evidence, as seen in the case of Homo rudolfensis. As new fossils are discovered and new technologies are developed, the debate over Homo rudolfensis is likely to continue. Whether it represents a separate lineage or a variant of Homo habilis, its study has provided valuable insights into the diversity of early Homo species and the complex evolutionary processes that shaped our species. The ongoing research into Homo rudolfensis and its relationship with Homo habilis is a testament to the dynamic nature of paleoanthropology and the importance of continued exploration and discovery. Part 3, Morphological Analysis and Comparative Anatomy the morphological analysis of Homo rudolfensis is critical in understanding its relationship to other early Homo species, particularly Homo habilis. Morphology, the study of the form and structure of organisms, 
provides valuable insights into how species are related, how they lived, and how they might have evolved. In the case of Homo rudolfensis, its unique combination of cranial, facial, and dental features has been the subject of intense study and debate. One of the most striking features of Homo rudolfensis is its cranial capacity. With an estimated brain size of around 750 cubic centimeters, Homo rudolfensis has a larger brain than most specimens of Homo habilis, whose cranial capacity typically ranges from 500 to 700 cubic centimeters. This difference in brain size has led some researchers to suggest that Homo rudolfensis might have had more advanced cognitive abilities, which could have influenced its behavior, tool use, and social structure. The shape of the skull in Homo rudolfensis is also distinct. Unlike the more rounded and gracile, lightly built, crania of Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis has a flatter face with a broader and more robust skull. The frontal bone, which forms the forehead, is more vertical, and the brow ridges are less pronounced. These features give Homo rudolfensis a more modern appearance compared to Homo habilis, which has a more primitive, ape-like face. The dental morphology of Homo rudolfensis is another area where it differs significantly from Homo habilis. Homo rudolfensis has larger molars and premolars, with thicker enamel, suggesting a diet that included tougher or more abrasive foods. The robust jaw and large teeth of Homo rudolfensis indicate that it might have been adapted to processing a different diet than Homo habilis, possibly including more plant-based foods or harder items like nuts and seeds. In contrast, Homo habilis has smaller teeth with thinner enamel, which suggests a more omnivorous diet, potentially including a greater reliance on meat or softer foods. The differences in dental morphology between the two species have led to suggestions that they might have occupied different ecological niches, with Homo rudolfensis possibly specializing in a different diet or foraging strategy. The postcranial skeleton of Homo rudolfensis, though less well-preserved than its cranial remains, also provides some clues about its physical capabilities and lifestyle. While much of the postcranial evidence is fragmentary, it suggests that Homo rudolfensis had a more robust build than Homo habilis, with stronger limbs and a more powerful musculoskeletal system. This could indicate that Homo rudolfensis was more adapted to physical tasks such as carrying, climbing, or foraging in more challenging environments. Comparative anatomy, which involves comparing the physical structures of different species, has been crucial in understanding the relationship between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis. By examining the similarities and differences in their skeletal structures, researchers can infer how these species might have lived, what they ate, and how they might have interacted with their environment. One area of comparative anatomy that has been particularly informative is the analysis of the pelvic and lower limb structures. These structures are critical in understanding bipedalism, the ability to walk on two legs, which is a defining characteristic of the genus Homo. While there is limited postcranial evidence for Homo rudolfensis, comparisons with Homo habilis suggest that both species were fully bipedal, with adaptations for walking and possibly running long distances. However, the more robust build of Homo rudolfensis might suggest differences in locomotion or lifestyle compared to Homo habilis. For example, Homo rudolfensis might have been better adapted to walking in more rugged or varied terrain, or it might have had greater endurance or strength for tasks such as carrying heavy loads or foraging in difficult environments. The differences in cranial, facial, dental, and postcranial morphology between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis provide important clues about their relationship and how they might have lived. These differences suggest that Homo rudolfensis was not just a variant of Homo habilis but potentially represented a separate evolutionary experiment within the genus Homo. The unique combination of features seen in Homo rudolfensis indicates that it might have followed a different evolutionary path, leading to different adaptations and survival strategies. The study of Homo rudolfensis through morphological analysis and comparative anatomy has enriched our understanding of early human evolution. By examining the physical structures of these ancient hominins, researchers can piece together the story of how they lived, how they adapted to their environment, and how they might be related to modern humans. The ongoing research into Homo rudolfensis and its relationship with Homo habilis continues to provide valuable insights into the diversity and complexity of the genus Homo during the Pleistocene epoch. 
Part 4, The Environmental Context of Homo Rudolfensis Understanding the environmental context in which Homo rudolfensis lived is essential for interpreting its adaptations, behavior, and potential interactions with other species. The fossils of Homo rudolfensis were discovered in the East African Rift Valley, a region that has yielded some of the most important hominin fossils in the study of human evolution. This area, particularly around Lake Turkana in Kenya, provides a rich geological and ecological context that helps researchers reconstruct the environment in which Homo rudolfensis lived. The East African Rift Valley is a geological wonder, characterized by a series of rifts and valleys formed by tectonic forces. This region has been subject to significant geological changes over millions of years, including volcanic activity, shifts in climate, and the formation of large lakes and rivers. These geological processes have created a unique environment that has preserved numerous fossils, allowing scientists to study the evolution of early hominins in great detail. During the time of Homo rudolfensis, which is estimated to have lived around 2 million years ago, the climate in the East African Rift Valley was undergoing significant changes. The region experienced fluctuations between wet and dry periods, which would have had a profound impact on the flora and fauna. These climatic shifts likely influenced the availability of resources, such as food and water, and would have created challenges and opportunities for early hominins. The environment in which Homo rudolfensis lived was likely a mosaic of different habitats, including open grasslands, wooded areas, and riverine environments. This diverse landscape would have provided a variety of resources, from plant foods to animals, but it also would have presented challenges, such as competition with other species and the need to adapt to changing conditions. The ability to exploit different habitats and resources would have been crucial for the survival of Homo rudolfensis. The geological setting of Lake Turkana, where many Homo rudolfensis fossils have been found, is particularly significant. Lake Turkana, sometimes referred to as the Cradle of Mankind, is the world's largest permanent desert lake and has been a key site for paleoanthropological research. The area around the lake has a rich fossil record that includes a wide range of hominins, from Australopithecines to early members of the genus Homo. The presence of Homo rudolfensis in this region suggests that it was well adapted to the environmental conditions of the time. The large brain size and robust physical build of Homo rudolfensis indicate that it might have been capable of exploiting a variety of resources and possibly adapting to different ecological niches. Its larger molars and thick enamel suggest a diet that included tough or fibrous plant foods, which would have been abundant in the region's varied landscapes. The East African Rift Valley was also home to other hominin species, including Homo habilis and Australopithecus boise, during the same period that Homo rudolfensis lived. This suggests that the region was a hotspot of hominin diversity, with multiple species potentially coexisting and interacting. The presence of these different species in the same region raises questions about how they might have competed for resources, whether they occupied different ecological niches, and how they might have influenced each other's evolution. The changing climate of the Pleistocene epoch, particularly the onset of glaciation and the expansion of grasslands, would have had a significant impact on the environment and the species living in it. The ability to adapt to these changes would have been crucial for the survival of Homo rudolfensis. Its robust build and large brain might have given it an advantage in finding food, avoiding predators, and navigating the challenges of its environment. The environmental context of Homo rudolfensis provides valuable insights into how this species lived and evolved. By studying the geology, climate, and ecology of the East African Rift Valley, researchers can better understand the adaptations and survival strategies of Homo rudolfensis. This context also helps to explain the differences between Homo rudolfensis and other early Homo species, such as Homo habilis, and provides clues about how these species might have interacted and evolved in response to their environment. The study of the environmental context in which Homo rudolfensis lived is a crucial aspect of paleoanthropology. It allows researchers to reconstruct the past and understand the factors that shaped the evolution of early hominins. As new fossils are discovered and new methods are developed, our understanding of the environment and its impact on human evolution will continue to grow, providing deeper insights into the story of Homo rudolfensis and the origins of our species.
Part 5, Technological and Cultural Insights. The study of early Homo species, including Homo rudolfensis, extends beyond just their physical characteristics, it also encompasses their technological and cultural behaviors. The tools and cultural practices associated with Homo rudolfensis provide valuable insights into its cognitive abilities, social structure, and interactions with the environment. These aspects of early human behavior are crucial for understanding how Homo rudolfensis might have lived and how it compared to other hominins, particularly Homo habilis. One of the key aspects of early Homo species is their use of tools. The Olduin tool industry, which is characterized by simple stone tools such as flakes and choppers, is often associated with Homo habilis. These tools represent some of the earliest known evidence of tool use in the human lineage and are considered a significant milestone in human evolution. However, the association of Homo rudolfensis with the Olduin tools has been a subject of debate. While direct evidence linking Homo rudolfensis to specific tools is limited, it is possible that this species also made and used Olduin tools. The larger brain size of Homo rudolfensis suggests that it might have had the cognitive capacity for toolmaking and use. The ability to create and use tools would have provided Homo rudolfensis with a significant advantage in accessing resources, such as processing plant materials or butchering animals. The presence of Olduin tools at sites where Homo rudolfensis fossils have been found suggests that this species, like Homo habilis, might have been capable of manipulating its environment to meet its needs. The ability to make tools indicates a level of planning, foresight, and manual dexterity, all of which are important cognitive skills. If Homo rudolfensis did use tools, it would have represented a critical step in the development of early human technology and culture. In addition to tool use, the cultural aspects of Homo rudolfensis, such as social behavior and group dynamics, are important areas of study. While direct evidence of social behavior is difficult to obtain from fossils, researchers can make inferences based on comparisons with other hominins and modern humans. The larger brain size of Homo rudolfensis suggests that it might have had a more complex social structure compared to earlier hominins, potentially involving greater cooperation and communication. The study of social behavior in early hominins often involves looking at factors such as group size, cooperation, and the sharing of resources. In the case of Homo rudolfensis, its robust build and large teeth suggest that it might have been capable of processing tough plant materials, which could have been shared within a group. The ability to share food and resources would have been an important aspect of survival, particularly in challenging environments. The possibility of symbolic thought or early forms of communication in Homo rudolfensis is another area of interest. While there is no direct evidence of symbolic behavior, such as art or ritual, in Homo rudolfensis, its larger brain size and potential for complex social interactions suggest that it might have had some capacity for symbolic thought. This could have included simple forms of communication or social bonding, which are important precursors to the development of language. The technological and cultural aspects of Homo rudolfensis provide important clues about its behavior and cognitive abilities. While the evidence is limited, the association with Olduin tools and the implications of its larger brain size suggest that Homo rudolfensis was a capable and adaptable species. Its ability to make and use tools, cooperate with others, and potentially engage in early forms of communication would have given it significant advantages in survival and reproduction. The study of technology and culture in early hominins is a crucial aspect of understanding human evolution. It provides insights into how early Homo species interacted with their environment, with each other, and how they developed the skills and behaviors that eventually led to modern human culture. The ongoing research into the technological and cultural aspects of Homo rudolfensis continues to shed light on the evolution of our species and the factors that shape the development of human behavior. Part 6, Genetic Evidence and the Evolutionary Tree. Genetic evidence has become an increasingly important tool in the study of human evolution, providing insights that were previously unattainable through morphological analysis alone. In the case of Homo rudolfensis, however, the genetic evidence is limited due to the age of the fossils and the difficulty in extracting viable DNA from such ancient remains. 
Nevertheless, advances in genetic technology and the study of related species have provided some clues about the evolutionary relationships between Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, and other early Homo species. The use of genetic evidence in paleoanthropology involves comparing the DNA of ancient hominins with that of modern humans and other primates. This allows researchers to reconstruct evolutionary relationships, identify genetic similarities and differences, and estimate the timing of divergence between species. While direct genetic evidence from Homo rudolfensis is not yet available, studies of related species, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, have shown that ancient DNA can provide valuable insights into the evolutionary history of our species. One of the key questions in the study of Homo rudolfensis is its relationship to Homo habilis. The morphological differences between the two species suggest that they might represent separate lineages within the genus Homo, but the lack of genetic evidence has made it difficult to confirm this hypothesis. However, studies of other early Homo species, such as Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, have shown that there was significant genetic diversity within the genus Homo, which supports the idea that multiple lineages might have existed. The phylogenetic position of Homo rudolfensis within the human evolutionary tree is another area of interest. Phylogenetics is the study of evolutionary relationships among species, often represented in the form of a tree that shows how species are related through common ancestry. The exact position of Homo rudolfensis within this tree is still debated, but it is generally considered to be one of the earliest members of the genus Homo, along with Homo habilis. The divergence hypothesis, which suggests that Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis represent separate evolutionary lineages, is supported by the morphological differences between the two species. If Homo rudolfensis did represent a separate lineage, it would have diverged from a common ancestor shared with Homo habilis, leading to different adaptations and potentially different survival strategies. This divergence might have been driven by factors such as environmental changes, dietary differences, or competition for resources. The lack of direct genetic evidence from Homo rudolfensis means that researchers must rely on other methods to infer its evolutionary relationships. One approach is to compare the morphology of Homo rudolfensis with that of other early Homo species and modern humans, using techniques such as cladistics, which analyzes the shared characteristics of species to determine their evolutionary relationships. These studies have provided evidence that Homo rudolfensis might be more closely related to certain species, such as Homo habilis or Homo erectus, but the exact relationships remain unclear. Another approach is to study the genetic evidence from related species, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, to gain insights into the evolutionary processes that shape the genus Homo. These studies have shown that interbreeding between different Homo species was common, which raises the possibility that Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis might have also interbred, leading to genetic exchange between the two species. This could explain some of the similarities and differences seen in their morphology. The study of ancient DNA from other early Homo species has also provided insights into the timing of key evolutionary events, such as the emergence of Homo erectus and the spread of early Homo species out of Africa. These studies suggest that the genus Homo was characterized by significant genetic diversity, with multiple lineages coexisting and potentially interacting. This diversity supports the idea that Homo rudolfensis might have represented a separate lineage, contributing to the complex evolutionary history of our species. The use of genetic evidence in the study of Homo rudolfensis is still in its early stages, but it holds great promise for the future. As new technologies are developed and more ancient DNA is recovered, researchers will be able to gain a clearer picture of the evolutionary relationships between Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, and other early Homo species. This will provide valuable insights into the origins of our species and the factors that shape the evolution of the genus Homo. In conclusion, while the genetic evidence for Homo rudolfensis is currently limited, the study of related species and advances in genetic technology are providing new insights into its evolutionary history. The morphological differences between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis suggest that they might represent separate lineages, and ongoing research into ancient DNA and phylogenetics will continue to shed light on this important question.
The study of genetic evidence in paleoanthropology is a rapidly evolving field, and future discoveries will undoubtedly enhance our understanding of Homo rudolfensis and its place in the human evolutionary tree. Part 7, The Broader Implications for Human Evolution Homo rudolfensis, whether classified as a distinct species or a variant of Homo habilis, offers significant insights into the broader patterns and processes of human evolution. The existence of this species during a crucial period in the Pleistocene epoch raises important questions about the diversity of early Homo species and the evolutionary forces that shaped the development of our genus. The study of Homo rudolfensis contributes to our understanding of the complex evolutionary pathways that led to the emergence of Homo sapiens and highlights the role of diversity in the evolutionary process. One of the key implications of Homo rudolfensis for human evolution is the concept of species diversity within the genus Homo. The traditional view of human evolution, which depicted a linear progression from one species to the next, has been increasingly challenged by evidence of multiple coexisting species within the genus Homo. Homo rudolfensis, along with Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and other early Homo species, represents one of these multiple lineages that existed during the early Pleistocene. This diversity suggests that early Homo species were not isolated from one another but likely interacted, competed, and possibly even interbred. The presence of multiple species in the same region, such as the East African Rift Valley, implies that these hominins occupied different ecological niches or had different adaptations that allowed them to coexist. Understanding the nature of these interactions and the ecological roles of different species is crucial for reconstructing the evolutionary history of the genus Homo. The study of Homo rudolfensis also highlights the importance of adaptability in human evolution. The Pleistocene epoch was a time of significant environmental change, including fluctuations in climate, the spread of grasslands, and the appearance of new ecosystems. Early Homo species, including Homo rudolfensis, had to adapt to these changing conditions to survive. The larger brain size and robust build of Homo rudolfensis suggest that it might have developed specific adaptations to cope with the challenges of its environment, such as improved cognitive abilities for problem-solving and more efficient ways of processing food. These adaptations would have been crucial for survival and would have influenced the evolutionary trajectory of Homo rudolfensis. For example, the ability to exploit a variety of food sources, including tougher plant materials, could have provided Homo rudolfensis with a nutritional advantage in environments where other food sources were scarce. Similarly, the development of tools and technologies, if associated with Homo rudolfensis, would have further enhanced its ability to adapt to different environments and compete with other species. Another broader implication of Homo rudolfensis for human evolution is the role of evolutionary experimentation in the development of the genus Homo. The existence of multiple species with different adaptations suggests that early human evolution was characterized by a series of evolutionary experiments, with different species exploring different strategies for survival and reproduction. Some of these experiments, such as the lineage leading to Homo sapiens, were ultimately more successful, while others, like Homo rudolfensis, did not continue into the present. This idea of evolutionary experimentation is supported by the morphological diversity seen in early Homo species. Homo rudolfensis, with its unique combination of traits, represents one of these evolutionary experiments, exploring a particular set of adaptations that might have been well suited to its environment at the time. The success or failure of these experiments would have been determined by factors such as environmental changes, competition with other species, and the ability to adapt to new challenges. The study of Homo rudolfensis also raises questions about the concept of species in human evolution. The debate over whether Homo rudolfensis should be classified as a separate species or a variant of Homo habilis highlights the difficulties in defining species boundaries in the fossil record. These challenges are compounded by the fact that early Homo species might have interbred, leading to genetic exchange and the blurring of species boundaries. This has important implications for how we understand the concept of species in human evolution and the processes that drive speciation and diversification. In addition to its implications for understanding the diversity and adaptability of early Homo species, 
Homo rudolfensis also contributes to our understanding of the evolutionary processes that led to the emergence of Homo sapiens. The study of Homo rudolfensis, along with other early Homo species, provides insights into the selective pressures that shaped the evolution of our genus, including the development of larger brains, bipedalism, and tool use. These traits, which are characteristic of Homo sapiens, likely had their origins in the adaptations developed by earlier species like Homo rudolfensis. Finally, the study of Homo rudolfensis underscores the importance of continued research and discovery in paleoanthropology. As new fossils are found and new technologies are developed, our understanding of early human evolution continues to evolve. The story of Homo rudolfensis is a reminder that our knowledge of human evolution is still incomplete and that there is much more to learn about the origins of our species. Part 8. Fossil Record Challenges and Interpretations The study of Homo rudolfensis, like much of paleoanthropology, is heavily dependent on the fossil record. However, the fossil record is often incomplete, and this presents significant challenges in interpreting the evolutionary history of early Homo species. The fossils attributed to Homo rudolfensis are relatively few and fragmentary, which complicates efforts to understand this species' morphology, behavior, and evolutionary relationships. These challenges highlight the difficulties faced by researchers in reconstructing the past and underscore the importance of careful interpretation and analysis of the available evidence. One of the primary challenges in studying Homo rudolfensis is the limited number of fossil specimens. The most famous fossil attributed to Homo rudolfensis is KNMER 1470, a well-preserved skull discovered in 1972. This skull provides valuable information about the cranial morphology of Homo rudolfensis, including its larger brain size and distinct facial features. However, there are relatively few other fossils that can be definitively attributed to this species, and this limits our ability to fully understand its anatomy and variation. The fragmentary nature of the fossil record also poses challenges. Many of the fossils attributed to Homo rudolfensis consist of isolated bones or teeth, which provide only partial information about the species. For example, while the KNMER 1470 skull provides important insights into the cranial morphology of Homo rudolfensis, there is much less information available about its postcranial skeleton. This makes it difficult to draw conclusions about the species' locomotion, behavior, and lifestyle. The interpretation of these fragmentary fossils is further complicated by the possibility of mixing or misidentification. In regions like the East African Rift Valley, where multiple hominin species coexisted, it is possible that fossils from different species have been mixed together at archaeological sites. This can lead to misinterpretations of the fossil evidence and incorrect conclusions about the morphology and behavior of Homo rudolfensis. In addition to the challenges posed by the incomplete fossil record, there are also difficulties in interpreting the evidence that is available. The debate over the classification of Homo rudolfensis is a prime example of this. Different researchers have interpreted the same fossil evidence in different ways, leading to varying conclusions about whether Homo rudolfensis should be considered a separate species or a variant of Homo habilis. These differences in interpretation are often influenced by factors such as the theoretical perspectives of the researchers, the methods used to analyze the fossils, and the availability of comparative material. One of the key areas of interpretation involves the cranial morphology of Homo rudolfensis. The larger brain size and distinct facial features of Homo rudolfensis have been interpreted by some researchers as evidence of a separate evolutionary lineage within the genus Homo. However, others have suggested that these features might represent variation within a single species, with Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis being part of a broader spectrum of early Homo diversity. This debate reflects the broader challenges of defining species boundaries in the fossil record, particularly in cases where there is significant variation within and between species. Another area of interpretation involves the dental morphology of Homo rudolfensis. The larger molars and thicker enamel of Homo rudolfensis have been interpreted as evidence of a diet that included tougher or more abrasive foods. However, the exact nature of this diet and its implications for the species' behavior and lifestyle remain subjects of debate. 
Some researchers have suggested that the dental features of Homo rudolfensis might indicate a specialization in a particular type of food, while others have argued that they could represent a more generalized diet that included a variety of plant and animal resources. The challenges of interpreting the fossil record are not unique to Homo rudolfensis but are a common issue in paleoanthropology. The incomplete and fragmentary nature of the fossil record means that researchers must often make inferences based on limited evidence, and these inferences are subject to revision as new fossils are discovered and new methods of analysis are developed. This process of interpretation is an essential part of scientific inquiry, but it also means that our understanding of early human evolution is constantly evolving. Despite these challenges, the study of Homo rudolfensis has provided valuable insights into the diversity and complexity of early Homo species. The fossil evidence, while limited, has contributed to our understanding of the evolutionary processes that shaped the genus Homo and has raised important questions about the nature of species diversity in early human evolution. The ongoing research into Homo rudolfensis and the careful interpretation of the fossil evidence continue to shed light on this enigmatic species and its place in the human evolutionary story. Part 9, Controversies and Current Debates The study of Homo rudolfensis has been marked by a number of controversies and ongoing debates within the paleoanthropological community. These debates revolve around issues such as the classification of Homo rudolfensis, its evolutionary relationships with other Homo species, and the implications of its unique morphology for our understanding of human evolution. The differing interpretations of the fossil evidence have led to a range of hypotheses, each with its own implications for the broader narrative of human evolution. One of the central controversies surrounding Homo rudolfensis is its classification as a separate species or a variant of Homo habilis. As discussed earlier, the morphological differences between Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis have led some researchers to argue that they represent separate lineages within the genus Homo. However, others have suggested that these differences might fall within the range of variation for a single species, leading to the conclusion that Homo rudolfensis is simply a regional or morphological variant of Homo habilis. This debate is complicated by the fact that the concept of species in paleoanthropology is often difficult to apply to the fossil record. Unlike living organisms, where species can be defined based on reproductive isolation and genetic evidence, the classification of fossil species relies primarily on morphological differences. These differences can be influenced by a range of factors, including sexual dimorphism, geographic variation, and environmental adaptations, making it challenging to draw clear boundaries between species. The debate over the classification of Homo rudolfensis also has broader implications for our understanding of the genus Homo. If Homo rudolfensis is recognized as a separate species, it suggests that the genus Homo was characterized by greater diversity than previously thought, with multiple lineages coexisting and evolving in parallel. This would challenge the traditional view of human evolution as a linear progression from one species to the next and support the idea of a more complex evolutionary tree with multiple branches. Another area of controversy involves the evolutionary relationships between Homo rudolfensis, Homo habilis, and other early Homo species. The exact position of Homo rudolfensis within the human evolutionary tree is still debated, with some researchers suggesting that it represents an early offshoot of the genus Homo, while others propose that it is more closely related to later species such as Homo erectus. The lack of direct genetic evidence and the limited fossil record make it difficult to resolve these questions, leading to ongoing debates about the evolutionary history of Homo rudolfensis. The unique morphology of Homo rudolfensis, particularly its larger brain size and distinct facial features, has also been a source of debate. Some researchers have interpreted these features as evidence of advanced cognitive abilities and potential behavioral differences compared to other early Homo species. However, others have argued that the differences in morphology might not necessarily correlate with differences in behavior or cognition, and that more evidence is needed to make definitive conclusions about the lifestyle and capabilities of Homo rudolfensis. One of the more recent debates in the study of Homo rudolfensis involves the potential implications of new fossil discoveries. As new fossils are found, 
they have the potential to either support or challenge existing interpretations of homo rudolfensis and its place in the human evolutionary story. For example, the discovery of additional cranial or postcranial remains could provide more information about the physical characteristics and behavior of Homo rudolfensis, while new fossil finds in different regions could shed light on its geographic distribution and interactions with other species. The controversies and debates surrounding Homo rudolfensis are a reflection of the dynamic and evolving nature of paleoanthropology. As new evidence is discovered and new methods of analysis are developed, our understanding of this enigmatic species continues to change. The ongoing debates highlight the importance of continued research and exploration in the field, as each new discovery has the potential to reshape our understanding of human evolution. Despite the controversies, the study of Homo rudolfensis has contributed significantly to our knowledge of early human evolution. It has raised important questions about the diversity of the genus Homo, the evolutionary processes that shaped our species, and the challenges of interpreting the fossil record. The ongoing debates about Homo rudolfensis are a testament to the complexity of human evolution and the importance of critical inquiry in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. Part 10, Homo rudolfensis in the broader context of human evolution. Homo rudolfensis, while a species with unique features and unresolved questions, fits into a broader narrative of human evolution that reflects the complexity and diversity of the genus Homo. The study of Homo rudolfensis provides valuable insights into the evolutionary processes that led to the emergence of modern humans and highlights the importance of understanding the broader context in which this species existed. One of the key aspects of Homo rudolfensis in the broader context of human evolution is its relationship with other early Homo species. As one of the earliest members of the genus Homo, Homo rudolfensis coexisted with other species such as Homo habilis and possibly early forms of Homo erectus. The coexistence of these species suggests that the early Pleistocene was a period of significant evolutionary experimentation, with multiple hominin lineages exploring different adaptations and strategies for survival. The diversity of early Homo species, including Homo rudolfensis, challenges the traditional linear model of human evolution, which posits a single, direct line of descent from early hominins to modern humans. Instead, the fossil record suggests a more complex picture, with multiple species coexisting and potentially interacting with one another. This has important implications for our understanding of human evolution, as it suggests that the development of the genus Homo was not a straightforward process but rather one characterized by diversity, adaptation, and competition. The study of Homo rudolfensis also contributes to our understanding of the adaptive strategies that early Homo species employed to survive in changing environments. The Pleistocene epoch, during which Homo rudolfensis lived, was a time of significant climatic fluctuations, including the expansion of grasslands and the onset of ice ages. These environmental changes would have created challenges for early hominins, requiring them to develop new strategies for finding food, avoiding predators, and coping with harsh conditions. Homo rudolfensis, with its larger brain and robust build, might have developed specific adaptations to these challenges. For example, its larger brain size suggests that it might have had more advanced cognitive abilities, which could have allowed it to develop more complex tools or social behaviors. Similarly, its robust build and larger teeth suggest that it might have been adapted to a diet that included tougher plant materials or other difficult-to-process foods. These adaptations would have influenced the evolutionary trajectory of Homo rudolfensis and its ability to compete with other hominin species. The ability to exploit a variety of food sources, develop new technologies, and cooperate with others would have been crucial for survival in the dynamic environments of the Pleistocene. The study of these adaptations provides important insights into the factors that shaped the evolution of the genus Homo and ultimately led to the emergence of Homo sapiens. In addition to its role in understanding the adaptive strategies of early Homo species, Homo rudolfensis also provides valuable information about the evolutionary processes that led to the development of modern humans. The study of Homo rudolfensis, along with other early Homo species, helps to elucidate the selective pressures that shaped the evolution of our genus, including the development of larger brains, bipedalism, and tool use. 
These traits, which are characteristic of Homo sapiens, likely had their origins in the adaptations developed by earlier species like Homo rudolfensis. The study of Homo rudolfensis also raises important questions about the nature of species diversity in early human evolution. The existence of multiple species within the genus Homo suggests that human evolution was characterized by a high degree of diversity and experimentation. This diversity would have provided a range of evolutionary options, with different species exploring different strategies for survival and reproduction. Some of these strategies were more successful, leading to the continuation of certain lineages, while others, like Homo rudolfensis, eventually went extinct. The extinction of Homo rudolfensis and other early Homo species is another important aspect of its place in the broader context of human evolution. The reasons for the extinction of Homo rudolfensis are not fully understood, but they likely involved a combination of environmental changes, competition with other species, and possibly the inability to adapt to new challenges. The study of these factors provides important insights into the processes that drive species extinction and the ways in which species respond to changing environments. Finally, the study of Homo rudolfensis highlights the importance of continued research and exploration in paleoanthropology. As new fossils are discovered and new technologies are developed, our understanding of Homo rudolfensis and its place in the human evolutionary story continues to evolve. The study of Homo rudolfensis is a reminder that our knowledge of human evolution is still incomplete and that there is much more to learn about the origins of our species. Part 11, Reconstructing the Life of Homo rudolfensis. Reconstructing the daily life and survival strategies of Homo rudolfensis is a challenging but fascinating endeavor. While the fossil record provides limited direct evidence of behavior, researchers can make inferences based on the available morphological data, comparisons with other hominins, and the environmental context in which Homo rudolfensis lived. By piecing together this evidence, we can begin to build a picture of what life might have been like for Homo rudolfensis and how it navigated the challenges of its environment. One of the key aspects of reconstructing the life of Homo rudolfensis is understanding its diet and foraging strategies. The larger teeth and thicker enamel of Homo rudolfensis suggest that it might have been adapted to processing tougher or more abrasive foods, such as fibrous plants, roots, and possibly nuts. This would have required specialized foraging strategies, including the ability to identify and access these food sources in the varied landscapes of the East African Rift Valley. The diet of Homo rudolfensis would have had significant implications for its daily activities and social behavior. For example, the need to forage for specific types of food might have influenced the size and organization of social groups. Larger groups might have been necessary to efficiently locate and process food, while smaller groups could have been more mobile and adaptable to changing conditions. The social structure of Homo rudolfensis, while difficult to infer directly from fossils, might have involved cooperation and resource sharing, which are important aspects of survival in challenging environments. In addition to foraging for food, Homo rudolfensis would have needed to protect itself from predators and other dangers. The robust build and potentially strong limbs of Homo rudolfensis suggest that it might have been capable of defending itself physically, but it is also possible that it relied on social strategies, such as living in groups or using tools as weapons. The development of tools, if associated with Homo rudolfensis, would have been a critical aspect of its survival strategy, providing it with the means to hunt, process food, and defend itself. The use of tools by Homo rudolfensis, while still debated, is an important aspect of its potential behavior. If Homo rudolfensis was indeed a toolmaker, this would suggest a level of cognitive complexity and problem-solving ability that would have been crucial for its survival. The Olduin tools, characterized by simple flakes and choppers, represent some of the earliest known evidence of tool use in the human lineage. The ability to make and use tools would have provided Homo rudolfensis with significant advantages, allowing it to exploit a wider range of resources and adapt to different environments. The cognitive abilities of Homo rudolfensis are another important aspect of its daily life. The larger brain size of Homo rudolfensis, compared to other early Homo species, suggests that it might have had more advanced cognitive skills, including the ability to plan, solve problems, and possibly communicate with others. 
While there is no direct evidence of language or symbolic thought in Homo rudolfensis, its larger brain size raises the possibility that it might have had some form of early communication or social bonding, which are important precursors to the development of language. The social behavior of Homo rudolfensis is closely tied to its cognitive abilities. Social behavior in hominins is often inferred from factors such as group size, cooperation, and the sharing of resources. In the case of Homo rudolfensis, its larger brain and potential for complex social interactions suggest that it might have lived in groups with some level of social organization. This could have included cooperation in hunting or foraging, the sharing of food and resources, and possibly even the care of offspring by multiple members of the group. The environment in which Homo rudolfensis lived would have played a significant role in shaping its daily life. The East African Rift Valley, with its varied landscapes of grasslands, woodlands, and riverine environments, would have provided a range of resources but also posed challenges such as predators, competition with other species, and changing climatic conditions. The ability of Homo rudolfensis to adapt to these challenges would have been crucial for its survival, and this adaptability is reflected in its robust build, larger brain, and potential use of tools. One of the most intriguing aspects of reconstructing the life of Homo rudolfensis is the possibility of interactions with other hominin species. The East African Rift Valley was home to multiple hominin species during the time of Homo rudolfensis, including Homo habilis and Australopithecus boise. The coexistence of these species raises questions about how they might have interacted, whether they competed for resources, and whether they might have influenced each other's evolution. The possibility of interbreeding between species is another area of interest, as it could have implications for the genetic diversity of early Homo species. The daily life of Homo rudolfensis, while difficult to reconstruct with certainty, would have involved a complex interplay of factors such as diet, social behavior, tool use, and environmental adaptation. The ability to navigate these challenges would have determined the success of Homo rudolfensis as a species, and its unique combination of traits suggests that it was well adapted to its environment. The study of Homo rudolfensis provides valuable insights into the daily life and survival strategies of early Homo species, contributing to our understanding of the broader processes that shaped human evolution. Part 12. Conclusion, a separate lineage or a variant? The question of whether Homo rudolfensis represents a separate lineage within the genus Homo or a variant of Homo habilis has been a central debate in paleoanthropology since the discovery of the species. This debate touches on broader themes of human evolution, including the nature of species diversity, the processes of adaptation and survival, and the complexity of the evolutionary tree that led to modern humans. While the available evidence has provided important insights, the question remains unresolved, reflecting the ongoing challenges and opportunities in the study of human evolution. Throughout this exploration of Homo rudolfensis, several key points have emerged. First, the unique morphological features of Homo rudolfensis, including its larger brain size, flatter face, and distinct dental characteristics, suggest that it was a species with specific adaptations to its environment. These features set it apart from Homo habilis and other early Homo species, leading some researchers to propose that Homo rudolfensis represents a separate evolutionary lineage within the genus Homo. The debate over the classification of Homo rudolfensis is further complicated by the incomplete and fragmentary nature of the fossil record. The limited number of fossils attributed to Homo rudolfensis makes it difficult to draw definitive conclusions about its morphology, behavior, and evolutionary relationships. The differences in interpretation among researchers highlight the challenges of defining species boundaries in the fossil record and underscore the importance of continued research and discovery in the field. Another important theme is the broader implications of Homo rudolfensis for our understanding of human evolution. The existence of multiple early Homo species, including Homo rudolfensis, suggests that the genus Homo was characterized by significant diversity and evolutionary experimentation. This diversity challenges the traditional linear model of human evolution and supports the idea of a more complex evolutionary tree with multiple branches and interactions among species. 
The study of Homo rudolfensis also provides valuable insights into the adaptive strategies that early Homo species employed to survive in changing environments. The larger brain size, robust build, and potential tool use of Homo rudolfensis suggest that it was well adapted to the challenges of its environment, including fluctuations in climate, competition for resources, and the need for social cooperation. These adaptations would have influenced the evolutionary trajectory of Homo rudolfensis and its interactions with other species. The controversies and debates surrounding Homo rudolfensis reflect the dynamic and evolving nature of paleoanthropology. As new fossils are discovered and new technologies are developed, our understanding of Homo rudolfensis and its place in the human evolutionary story continues to evolve. The study of Homo rudolfensis is a reminder that our knowledge of human evolution is still incomplete and that there is much more to learn about the origins of our species. In conclusion, while the question of whether Homo rudolfensis represents a separate lineage or a variant of Homo habilis remains unresolved, the study of this species has provided valuable insights into the diversity and complexity of early human evolution. The unique features of Homo rudolfensis, its potential adaptations, and its broader implications for the genus Homo underscore the importance of continued research and exploration in the field. The study of Homo rudolfensis, like much of paleoanthropology, is an ongoing process of discovery and interpretation, and future findings will undoubtedly shed more light on this enigmatic species and its place in the human evolutionary story. Looking forward, the continued exploration of early Homo species, including Homo rudolfensis, holds the promise of new discoveries that will further illuminate the evolutionary processes that shaped our species. The integration of new technologies, such as advanced imaging and genetic analysis, with traditional fossil studies will likely provide new insights into the morphology, behavior, and relationships of early hominins. The study of Homo rudolfensis, therefore, remains a crucial and exciting area of research in the quest to understand the origins and evolution of humanity.